Hello everyone, I figured I would come to you with a follow-up video regarding uh, judging. When I said in the video yesterday that we could determine right from wrong and that we don't use the mentality of, oh, you can't judge, who are you to judge in our everyday lives. After the video was made, a prime example of what I was talking about happened. I went to a restaurant to get some sandwiches, and then I was going to go to another restaurant to get some drinks. The first restaurant shortchanged me, didn't give me back the correct amount of change, and the second restaurant where that I got the sweet tea from uh, didn't give me the correct amount of drinks. And I didn't mention any names because I'm not interested in necessarily embarrassing people over something so trivial as not getting the right amount of change back or the number of tea that I got. <clears throat> now with that being said, however, if I was to use the world's logic, the world's mentality, then I could not look at my order, I could not go to count my change and see that there was an indiscrepancy. And I certainly wouldn't be able to go back and say, you got this wrong, please fix it. And so it just goes to show how that what pe the logic that people use in everyday life is tossed out the window when they start to talking about religion. And in following up, there was a video on YouTube from uh, Krista Pettiford. It says it was uploaded a year ago, has 40 views. It says three reasons why we should not judge others. Well, here's the thing about that. <clears throat> she did use two verses that I want to address real quick. One of the verses is in 1 Corinthians 4. And where she said, it says, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. So she is saying to not judge people. Well, let's go back and look at it in its context. And starting in verse 1, Paul writes, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. And so, verse 5 gives us a clue, and the context gives us a clue as to what sort of judging that Paul is talking about here when he says, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. As we already noticed in the video yesterday, there are different types of judging. There's hypocritical judging, there's righteous judging, and then there's a different type of judging that I did not address and what we're talking about here, well, rather what Paul is talking about is judging the heart. And so 
if you go back to verse 5 and notice it says who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts it's not saying not to judge people it's saying not to judge their motivations there are actions that are always sinful there is no way around it adultery is always sinful if someone commits adultery for example they have to repent whether they intended to commit adultery or not whether they just slipped up and fell into temptation or not they still have to repent because adultery is still sinful what Paul is talking about here are actions that are not inherently sinful but could be made sinful based off of someone's motivations preaching is a good thing well preaching the truth is a good thing I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say just preaching because if someone preaches false doctrine then that's always wrong but preaching the truth is a good thing but if one preaches the truth for the sake of power or money then they have corrupted what they are doing and so what Paul is saying he's saying that it is not on them to judge his motivations for doing what he has done he is judged by the Lord the Lord is the one that knows the heart now granted while the Lord knows the heart he doesn't excuse sin we can look at someone's actions and look at God's Word and determine whether their actions are right or wrong you have to intimately know someone you have to really be able to read someone to determine motivation and that is not always easy and therefore and it's not you're not always right on it and so that's why we are told not to judge someone's motivations now you can ask but ultimately it is not up for you to just sit back and decide arbitrarily that someone is doing something for this particular reason and further evidence is given in this by Paul at later on in chapter 4 it says in verse 6 says and these things brethren I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos and for your sakes that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written that no one of you may be uh, that no one of you may be puffed up for one against another for who maketh thee to differ from another and what hast thou that thou didst not receive and if thou didst receive it why dost thou glory as if thou as if thou excuse me hadst not received it it says now you're full now you're rich now you've reigned as kings without us and I would to God that you did reign that we might that we also might reign with with you and he goes on to describe that here they are that are supposed to be so wise but here's the apostles who taught them and the apostles were basically made to be fools and so and he doesn't write it necessarily to shame them he wants them to be warned against looking at someone doing the right thing and then judging them to have an evil heart that they're doing it for the wrong that they're doing the right thing for the wrong reason now if you do the wrong thing it's always wrong regardless of your motivation you can do the wrong thing for the right reason you can do the wrong thing for the wrong reason but that is still wrong 
but you could do the right thing for the right reason or the right thing for the wrong reason. And if you do the right thing, for whatever your motivation is, that is not for man to decide. Now the next passage that she mentioned was James 4.11. It says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Well, if you go back and you look in the context, you have to go back up to verse 1. It says, From, uh, where, from whence come wars and fightings among you, Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that war in your members, ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye, ye ask amiss, and ye may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterer and adulter adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think the scripture saith in vain, The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. And it continues on. Once again, we're talking about that motivational thing. The, uh, there's actually a very good commentary on this. And uh, it's a, on the e-sword, it just says popular uh, commentary. Uh, it says, speak not evil one of another brethren. And it says, evil speaking has its origin in resentment and envy. Those whom we do not like or who, we, or who are our successful rivals, we are apt to depreciate. So what he's talking about, he's talking about judging people within and speaking evil within this competitive mindset and he's saying don't have this competitive mindset you know if you know where fighting comes from fighting comes from both desiring the same thing and you're competing over it and rather than just let God do his work and do your best you have people that will fight over stuff and they're asking it for all the wrong reasons and he's saying that if you do not have this humility in the sight of God if you're not humble then you're going to be more prone to speaking evil of this person whom you already have something against and that's where you really fall into the danger of judging someone's heart. Let's take for example two preachers that are wanting to, that are vying for the same position in preaching at a congregation and one of them starts you know talking evil like well this guy he's just wanting to preach for the money. So I've seen this attitude personally. I was at a youth function where they would hand out awards and I'm running real short on time here so I'm going to wrap this up but I was at a youth function where they would hand out awards and there was a congregation that had split and at that, con that congregation that had split had the the side that had split had started their own congregation and here they are both at this youth function and so you had these people that used to be on essentially the same side the same group 
at this youth function several years in a row. Now they were having they were going against each other. And I heard some really, really negative talking about people's motivations. And that was not right. So anyway, what we have here, we're not talking about looking at someone's actions, determining whether the actions are right or wrong, and right or wrong, and if they're wrong, telling the person they need to correct what they have done wrong and repent and come to God. We're talking about people that could be doing the right thing, that they're doing the right thing. Or they're not doing something that is sinful. But that we judge them to have the wrong motivation. That sort of judging is wrong judging. That is very akin to the hypocritical judgment that we addressed yesterday in the video. So I'm going to just wrap up this video uh, with that. That we can look at someone's actions and say, yes, that's right, or yes, that's wrong, based off of God's Word. So, with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. I just wanted to address it. Thank you.